Music Show. Day five. Get some things done here. We've got Big Head with me in the background. So, I've got the Only Love remix going. Come on. Sometimes you gotta get up and dance. You know how that is. stuff that's going on here i'm excited we got a special guest that's coming on today we got gene schmidt from uh, christian songwriters and musicians international who is coming on and we're gonna visit with him in just a moment here hopefully the audio will work out as far as that's concerned but let's get started with the verse of the day it is found in psalm 46 psalm 46 1 god is our refuge and strength a helper who is always found in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not be afraid, though the earth trembles and the mountains topple into the depths of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with its turmoil. Selah. There is a river. Its streams delight the city of God, a holy dwelling place of the Most High. God is with her. She will not be toppled. God will help her when the morning dawns. Nations rage, kingdoms topple, the earth melts when he lifts his voice. The Lord of armies is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come see the works of the Lord who brings devastation on the earth. He makes war cease throughout the earth. He shatters bows and cuts spears to pieces. He sets wagons ablaze. Stop your fighting and know that I am God. Exalted among the nations, exalted on the earth. The Lord of armies is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold and that really is the case for us is that god is our stronghold our refuge and our strength this is the erskine music show i got day five going on here and as i said before we've got a special guest that's coming on today it's gene schmidt and i've been charging folks up all week to just really use this as an opportunity what's up marcel um really use this as an opportunity to share christ with people hey uh marcel i'm gonna give you a shout out here just because you uh you're on here. Where's my stuff at? I don't even know. I don't even know what I'm doing here. But um, Marcel makes the song for me at one point. Uh, let's see if this is it. Maybe that's it. Marcel, you recognize this? Do you remember these bars? Mm. They say it's all in my head. So yeah, that's Marcel Pertillo doing some great things um, in this world. Hopefully you're doing well out there, my buddy. Tim and Heather, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. I'm not going to be long because I've got a special guest that's coming on. But really quickly, I'm going to do one topic today, and it's the economic stimulus that's going on. The government passed a bill to uh, allocate $2 trillion to Americans. Um, and so I, I give four words for all of my topics, and my four words for today are... And I don't know much about economics. In fact, I've got a good friend at SMU. Maybe I'll have her on at some point. She's a professor of economics at SMU. And um, she listened to one of my messages and she said, you don't know anything about economics. <laughs> so she was kind and gracious. She's always kind, but she's like, you don't know anything about economics. But I know this, $2 trillion coming to Americans sometime in the next month or so, maybe a couple of months. It's all about confidence. One, two, three, four. It's all about confidence. So if we can get people confident about the fact that they're going to keep their job or businesses that they can keep going and we can get past the point of people being shut inside and they want to come back outside and not feel like they're going to get sick, then um, that may work. But I actually don't think it's going to work. So that's my hot take of the day. Got a little Rasta horn here today. So what we're going to do is we've got a special guest that's joining us. Um, he was on the line a little bit earlier, but his name is Gene Schmidt. He's the founder and president of Christian Songwriters and Musician International. And I was talking with him the other day. In fact, I was hustling to get in here today. Thought I was going to miss my window of opportunity because um, I was at a church a few moments ago and I was at their food pantry. 
And so it's been a really big concern of mine that with the tornado that's happened in Nashville and all the stuff that's going on with people losing jobs and, you know, just uncertainty that we as Christians need to be, especially believers and pastors and churches who can resource people, we need to be on the front lines of resourcing people. So I was having some of those meetings this morning, checking out some facilities and trying to come up with a strategy as to how we can do food distribution uh, during this time. So I'll say some more about that. But uh, like I said before, I've got a special guest that's joining me. His name is Gene Schmidt. I, I hear him calling in even right now. So we're going to moderate and get him on the line here. Hopefully the audio is going to be strong enough to be able to hear it. But Gene Schmidt, come on in here, Gene. Gene Schmidt's coming in. Hey, buddy. Hey, brother. How, how are you today? How are you guys doing? We are doing good. Fantastic. Well, you are on the Erskine Music Show, whether you like it or not. <laughs> okay. So uh, you may have to speak up, uh, you know, pretty good volume here. I don't have all the technology that everybody else has, so... Alrighty. Can you hear that better? Yeah. Can you guys hear Gene? Can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear Gene? Say something, Gene. Hey, how's everybody? Is that... We good? Okay, silence is killing me. Go ahead, Gene. <laughs> Talk to everybody all and right. let everybody know. Hey. First of all, the, the question I want to ask, I've kind of introduced you a little bit here. Who are you? Okay. Who are you? Well, I, um, I'm a Christian man that's married with three kids and uh, three young men that are Air Force sons. I'm uh, involved. Uh, my day job is being involved in Romania with orphans and widows. Mm. Uh, and I've been doing that over 30 years. I live in Watertown, Wisconsin, and I'm involved locally a lot with helping the homeless. And in Watertown, I have a nonprofit called Adoration Abode. Uh, we have a thrift store, a men's shelter, working on a second shelter for men. And that's all happened in the last year. And then I'm chairman of CSMI, a Christian music organization. Uh, we're eight years old. Uh, and really, in a nutshell, we're about evangelism, missions, and taking Christ to the hurting places of our community and, and our nation. Yes. And, uh, and that's it in a nutshell. Um, happily married, my wife, Ann, uh, and my three sons, Logan, Kendrick, and Mariah, uh, um, have a nice, beautiful family. So... Thankful to God every day for uh, what he's done in our life. Yeah, and so my connection with you came through Christian Songwriters and Musician International. I happen to have somehow managed to be the national director for Christian Songwriters and Musician International. And so we've worked together on a number of projects. And Gene, you and I were talking the other day about some of the things that Christians can do. I wanted to specifically bring you on the show. Katie Peltier said hello, and we've got a couple of other people who are listening in and watching this morning. But I wanted to specifically bring you on the show because I wanted to hear what it is that you're doing up there in Watertown, uh, Wisconsin, that is changing people's lives. And even though the coronavirus is going on, you're still making a difference. And, and what are you doing? Well, we have been exempted in Wisconsin. There is a, a safer at home order across the state. Mm -hmm. But because we operate a men's shelter and a thrift store and a food pantries, they did not, they, we are exempt from that shutdown order. And so we've been able to be a big lighthouse in our whole area, not only in Watertown, but we have a food pantry in Wisconsin Dells. We have one in Juneau, Wisconsin. And because of this, a lot of people are out of work and needing mm -hmm. a hand of uh, help, needing a hand up. And God's just opened a big door to not only help them, but, but they're very open to God when you help them. Yes. And uh, people know that if you're helping them and it costs them nothing, when they're, like yesterday, a family of six had no food, and we were able to help wow. them. And, and they, they uh, were grateful, and, and it, we're able to share the Lord with lots of people. Um, and it's just what I would call, I would say right now is our greatest opportunity as the church since 911. Emphatically believe that. And I think churches need to reorientate what they're doing in this hour rather than just shutting the doors. A lot of churches have food pantries in them, and if they have a food pantry, they do not have to shut down. They're exempt across the country from that shutdown order. And you can open that food pantry up and help people and continue to do your witness. Uh, 
a lot of churches do reach out locally. Mobile food pantry, you can stand, set that up in your town. You can uh, also set up uh, mm. clothing outreach. And right now, people need the basics, and stores are running out of things. Right. And so it's just a huge opportunity to show God in tangible ways because it's like Matthew twenty five forty. As you've done it to the least of these, the Lord said you've done it unto him. I just want to urge people, don't, if you're under a lockdown order as a church, then, then reorientate and figure out how you can operate as a church locally to reach out now with the greatest mm. opportunity you've got right now to, to help feed the clo- hungry and clothe the, the naked and, 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 and pass out Bibles and tracts and and you know what God God wants us to kind of what I would say redeem the time and redeem the opportunity. Yeah. Last night, last night in Juneau, Wisconsin. Ooh, I like that. Uh, by the way, every strip club in Wisconsin shut down right now. So I've uh, I've got some I got some uh, relatives who are in pastoral ministry who are saying don't go to church, be the church. Yeah, be the church. And, and that's exactly what we're and, talking about this morning. Yeah, and uh, then another thing you can do in your community to to be open and not have to worry about uh, is do, you can reach out to the homeless. You can establish a fund, just a simple fund, and open up your office at that church and give someone a home a voucher that needs needs help. Mm. There's going to be a lot Come of on. homeless people. Gene is, hitting yeah. us, Gene is hitting us with more than I even thought, man. This is more than what we talked about. You didn't hear yep. before I got on here, but I had just, I was running to get back here because I was with a couple of pastors or a pastor and a, a worker who are putting together, or they've got a food pantry at their church. And it has just been yep. killing me the fact that I have been out of Nashville and the tornadoes happened. And then you get back in the coronavirus, they've literally got three truck fulls, semi truck fulls of warehouse wow. material in their, their building. And they're trying to figure out how to distribute it. And it's like, well, I'm. Where are they at, uh, Erskine? They're uh, located Life Church on Broadmoor. And uh, so I'm, I'm currently. Where are they at? In Nashville. You know what I've been encouraging them to do in Nashville, Erskine? I talked to the Nashville Merchants Association. I've been urging those clubs downtown on Broadway to have one club open up and become a, and allow a church to come in. And distribute food and clothes right down on Broadway to the eight thousand people right now that are out of work on Broadway. It's so, between eight. Yeah, let me ask you a question because I know people are probably dying to hear the answer to this. Is like, you know, yeah. you've talked about how the church can kind of get around some of the government restrictions, but here's my question to you, and I hear I want to see how you answer this question. I, mean, I know I'm putting you on the spot, but sure. there's people who are actually scared for their lives. Like if we come out and we actually interact with the public in any type of uh, dangerous way we might get coronavirus and we might die ourselves what do you say to those who say you know what it's just not safe for the church to be going out and distributing things to people and interacting with the public and having maybe too close a contact what do you want to say to to everybody that has that you know question and concern well what i do is if people are coming into our thrift store or food pantry they're sniffling and have a a issue like with a cold like that i ask them not to come in we 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 have gloves on and we distribute it outside the door to them of the of the food pantry. But uh, when they, I, I can only say this. I can say that the Nashville Risk Commission is housing 800 people right now. Yes, I've right. talked to those LA guys Risk as well. Commission's full. You have to take protocols of being careful. But when we the way we do it is they come into our food pantry, they get what they need, and we give them a Bible or a track, and they leave right away. And we don't have large crowds. We just have them come in, grab what they need, and leave. And that happens for nine hours a day, okay. Monday through Friday. And then we do not congregate them in the store. We have them come in, and then we help them. And we haven't had an issue with that at this point. All right. And uh, if they're sick, we ask them to stay outside the door, and then we leave a box out there for them. This is, this is uh, not... Yeah, this is not a news flash or anything, but you are not God. I'm not God. <laughs> None of us is God. God is only God. But you cannot tell what some people who are asymptomatic, they may ha- not have any symptoms whatsoever, and they may not show any signs of being sick in any way. Are you saying that you're willing to put your life on the line to be able to help people and tell people about Jesus? I'm putting you on the spot, I know. but Yeah, the answer is yes. Uh, yes, I was ambushed in Africa in 2008, Kenya. I was ambushed. My whole team was ambushed. 
We all should have been killed in the middle of a civil war. Yeah, I, I'm taking the John G. Lake position. Mm. Trust God. Trust God. If you're a man of God or a woman of God, then trust God because your life is on the line. If you go into Florida, Chicago, your life is on the line. So you're going to take the gospel. And we, you can't be afraid and you can't fear for your life. You have to have a, a deeper faith. You have to have a greater faith. The church should never go into the highways and byways fearful. They should go in with faith. To some people, that may sound radical, but I'm sorry. That's what men of God and women of God do. And that's what John G. Lake did. Read his story uh, and how God powerfully, Paul went into very dangerous areas in his day. He took a beating for the Lord, almost died. What? How many times was he beaten? Uh, how many times was he hunger, hungry and starving? Guess oh, what? Boy. Time to, it's time to be the church and be uh, apostolic in our outreach, to be believe in the power of God and to believe that he will protect us. And <laughs> I, I say the church <laughs> needs to see some boldness in us. And I'm just not fearful of that. I, I should have been killed in Africa and at the last minute, a vehicle of soldiers rescued my whole team. So I'm probably not the right guy to talk to about that. No, you're I'm the right sure. guy. You're the right I guy. I believe in divine healing, divine protection. I believe God can uh, uh, divinely destroy the bacteria. And so there's where I'm at with it. All right, going to call time out for just a second here. I'm going to get some comments here. We've got, my thing is blowing up today. We've got pastors who are on here telling you to preach. We've got people who are saying the church can't be scared. And the pastor that I was talking to at the food pantry said, it's always been the historic position of Christians to run into suffering, not run away from suffering. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I think you're articulating that pretty well. It's, it's cracking me up, the comments that are on here. If you tuned into the Erskine Music Show because you thought this was going to be a light show and we're just going to goof off, then you turned to the wrong show. You tuned into the wrong day. If you're a pastor that's out there, I see a couple of pastors who are on there. If you're a pastor who wanted to hear, just go hide in your house and just have a prayer meeting or just Facebook live and just keep yourself absolutely safe. You tuned into the wrong show on the wrong day because Gino don't play. And uh, he's a good friend of mine, and we've gotten closer throughout the years being able to work together with CSMI. There's some artists who are out there. Katie Peltier, and I uh, saw David Delgado was on there just a second ago. You guys put some links up to your music because there's some people, they're pastors who are out there. You know, they're not um, out and about these days, and so they might need some music to listen to. So get them some Katie Peltier music, some David Delgado music. Put me up some links on there. All right, Gene, before you go, and this last question that I want to ask you, what specific message do you want to give to pastors because i know there's at least three or four who are listening uh, and watching this live broadcast what do you want to say to pastors you're a pastor yourself and so what from pastor to pastor um man of god e-o man of god to man of god what do you want to say and women take of god take the cross to the crisis take the cross to the crisis there's power in the name of the lord uh, redeem this time, use this as an opportunity to reach the lost. I, I think we have to take the greatest, uh, I think we have to really look at this as a divine open door of being a lighthouse for the lost, the hurting. Don't be fearful, don't be afraid of your working in a food pantry or a homeless work or whatever you do or out on the street with a mobile ministry. I would say let fear be gone and stand in faith. And, uh, you know, the faith that the world needs to see, we're different than the world. We have a living God with us, in us, working through us. And I believe that God takes honor when, when we walk with him and don't have fear and doubt. You know, he said, unbelief is a, is a terrible thing because then it moves us away from our mission. Yeah. We can't do the mission in fear. We have to do it in faith. Hey, I didn't know I'd get ambushed in Africa, but I still went. I was six miles out of any major city when our team was ambushed. And guess what? God was with us when we got to Africa. He was with us when we got ambushed. And he was with, he delivered us. He said, you know, he'll deliver us from evil. And uh, I, I strongly want to urge the pastors, just take this time and let God use you to reach the lost any way you can right now because they're looking for hope and help. 
Absolutely. Gino, thank you so much for coming on the show today. We're going to have you back at some point. I want to hear more of what's going on. And uh, for some reason, if you get coronavirus and you die, I don't think you'll care. Uh, I'm pretty sure you'll be in heaven and you'll be happy about the fact that you serve the Lord with all your strength, all your soul and all your might. There's obviously going to be some people who disagree with you, but they will be doing what it is, I'm sure, that they can to help with uh, things that are going on. And as I said before, one of the, the strategies that I'm wanting to employ is I'm trying to figure out how to get some of these mobile clinics that you're talking about and food distribution to people in my local area. And so uh, let's continue to pray um, as a church. Let's continue to strategize about these things. Gino, thank you so much. I'll talk to you later, my friend. All right. Bless you. Bye now. All right. That boy done gone. He done gone raw. <laughs> He done gone raw. So that's what we have to look forward to. Here's what I'm going to do here. Uh, there's no good segue to get out of that uh, into anything else because um, that's kind of a mic drop moment here uh, for the show. But we will play a little bit of Erskine music. I'll give you a couple of uh, notes here uh, related to some of the merchandise that you can pick up. I'm going to put a link. In fact, uh, I think maybe a my assistant Leah is working, uh, watching this today. If you could put a link up to PayPal, that would be great. Uh, for those of you that want to support the show, want to support Erskine Music in any way, shape, form, or fashion, this song is called Merry Go Round. Thanks, Ellie Williams, from watching from Maryland today. Hope you guys are doing well up there, that you're staying safe. Um, Joe Sparks, thank you so much for tuning in and supporting what's going on here. Uh, we're not shrinking back here in Nashville. We're just trying to figure out how to recalibrate figure out how to advance the gospel in any way that we can and so all right so here we go can we can we get a, a picture of um ruby and scooby all right let me see if we can get ruby and scooby in here i know oh yeah i think i think it's it fell down but anyway uh so that in the background there there's ruby and scooby Say hello to Ruby and Scooby, guys. They won't say much to you. But um, here's the deal. That's some of our merchandise. There's the gray shirt there, Heather Gray, that says Love Moves, and the black shirt that says Love Moves. I'll be, yeah, thanks, Aaliyah, for putting that up there. I'll be um, getting on from time to time and showing you guys some merch. You can purchase some merch, and we're going to be scheduling an online concert here before too much longer. And I've already talked to several pastors who said, as soon as this thing gets over, we're going to have you do a full concert for the people. And I love doing that as well. But any way that I can reach out to you guys, hey, contact me um, throughout the day, uh, throughout the week. I'm doing this uh, show Monday through Friday. Uh, if there's things that you want to talk about, um, if there's things that you that come to your attention, I'm always looking for show ideas. Uh, obviously, with the coronavirus going on and, you know, all that's going on right now, reshuffling and reordering literally of our entire culture and society and world, there's a lot of topics for me to be able to talk about. So, I would always entertain having more topics. It looks like my sister is on here. What's going on? What is your name? That's not even you. Anyway, uh, so it's great seeing you guys. Thank you guys so much for the time. I know we went a little bit over the 15 minutes that I had allotted to take up your schedule. So, you guys that are working from home, get back to work. I said I wasn't going to take up a lot of your time. We'll look forward to seeing you guys on Monday. Have a fantastic weekend. Let's do what Gino was talking about there and what some of you guys had commented. Let's not talk about the church Let's be the church. So I'm going to sign out here. Big Head is signing out in the back here, and we will talk to you guys later. God bless.